Alright ladies and gentlemen, I went out there and I saw The Sound of Metal, and the moment I heard about this movie, I knew I wanted to review it. Not watch it, mind you, but review it. I wanted to review it because everyone was saying what a great movie it was, and people would be googling the reviews. I didn't think it was going to be a great movie. It was going to be one of those annoying drama films that everybody just, you know, gets up their own back end about, and it's like, yeah, well, that's what it is. Before I get into that, let me... Let me, let me remind you all that for every thousand subscribers I get, I purchase a bracelet from the company 4Ocean, and 4Ocean pulls a pound of trash out of the big blue for me. Now, that means that if you comment, like, and or subscribe to this channel, you are helping me clean up the ocean, and it's a big dirty ocean out there. So then, Riz Ahmed gives a stellar performance in a story about a heavy metal drummer who loses his hearing, and has to adapt. That's the whole movie. There's a reasonable amount of movie there. I mean, this is very much existentialist theater wherein you have like the theater of the absurd. You can talk about actions but really not plot points. You know, it's like, okay, he sells that stuff. That happens. You know, he has a bad experience here. That happens. He does this. That happens. I couldn't pinpoint a lot of the, the points in this film because, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff happening. And I even question just the realism of it because... Like, there's this, this, what happens in the film, okay? Guy loses his hearing and he makes bad decisions. He's an ex-heroin addict and he makes bad decisions. So, he loses his hearing, he keeps playing drums anyway till his hearing is completely screwed and he goes to a facility where, you know, people adapt. And it's like, well, I don't have the money for this. But, well, a church can sponsor you, okay? So, they church sponsor him. And then, like, when he's adapted, they're like, we're trying to figure out a way for you to stay here because you do good work t t teaching the kids. All right. But then they come up with a concept of our philosophy is being deficit something that needs to be fixed. Which is admirable. And me not being able to get to the other side of the country in less than two weeks is not something that needs to be fixed either. But I'm not going to stop building airplanes. So no, there's this big thing, big moment in the movie where it's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to get the operation. I'm going to going to see if I can get my hearing back. And his sort of adoptive father figure there is like, okay, go screw yourself. You know, you've, you've betrayed me by trying to get your hearing back. And it's like, okay. You know, it's hard to describe this movie without spoiling things. But I mean, there is a great moment in this film between the um, the girlfriend's father and the main character. And, you know, it's like he sort of shows up unannounced, hasn't seen his girlfriend in a while. And, you know, that's the other thing, the community where he's being taught how to be deaf. There's no girlfriends. So, you know, it's a, it's a blue balls community. Anyway, so he comes out of the blue balls community and he has this moment with his not quite father-in-law. I mean, he's lived with the girlfriend for years before this happened, so not quite father-in-law. And the father-in-law gives him this big heartfelt speech about how he accepts him now and yada, yada, yada. And this is a really cool speech, and I don't want to spoil that for you, because if you see that movie, that is a really great moment. It is a really great moment in an otherwise stupid film. Ah! Such great acting, really. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like, wow, this guy's really giving a good performance. He's being this character. And then, you know, right at the end there, there's this moment with the girlfriend and him, and you suddenly you read his tattoos that you never, 
You never read that in his tattoos before. It's like, did he have those tattoos the whole time? Or am I just reading that now? And it's telling you that tattoos are telling you what's happening. You know, the tattoos are telling you the emotions. And it's just at the end, though. Not really in the rest of the film, dude. I see the tattoos make that much of an impact. But, so there are all these great moments in this film. But it's not, it's not a film that takes a stance. What this film is, is a slice of life slash a maturation, a maturation uh, film. And maturation, they're often called coming of age films. But the problem with coming of age films is that this guy is of age. He's not coming of age. Maturation is a uh, term we use in psychology when we say, you know, sometimes variables change based on maturation. Like, for example, if you've got a bunch of old people in the study, their memory is likely to weaken over a significant amount of time because they're old, they're elderly, and this is a common maturation as you mature. So yes, this is a story about a man who adjusts to being deaf. Sort of. So, this is that point where we ask ourselves, well, what's being attempted? It's the story of a man who makes bad decisions and he keeps making bad decisions. I don't know what was attempted in this. I'm, I'm lost here. The Indiana Jones, you've got a person who is trying to save uh, something. You know, that's what's being attempted. A lot of action movies, I've got to save these people. I've got, that, that's what's going on. In this film, I mean, I guess he's trying to save his heavy metal music? But that's just such a small part of it. And the other question is, once you've figured out what the attempt is, was the attempt worthwhile? And I mean, you know, I have to admit here that if you're the kind of, if, if his thing is like, look, dude, it doesn't matter what you say to me, I'm always going to want to return to my music, which I can get behind, if you then turn around and say, well, but we're, we're about you not, not needing to be fixed here. Okay, so why am I at this place if I don't need to be fixed, if there's nothing wrong with me? I need to adapt to a situation. I mean, that was one of those dumb things when I was in school. We had the Adaptive Student Center because I suffer from uh, transient brain damage. Okay, it's the truth about me. Screws with my spelling, my ability to car. Uh, my ability to recognize faces, and my ability to sleep, apparently. Right? This is a real thing. Okay? So they said, well, you're not disabled, you're adaptive. Which is fine. It's stupid, and I don't care. What I care about is fixing the problem, which is what, you know, they never tried to do. But my thing is that, yes, I definitely had a problem. And it needed to be fixed. This guy, don't call me disabled because I'm deaf. Okay, you're not disabled. But if you want to play in a metal band, you're going to have to have some hearing. So yeah, look, I would say that you can put this film on your watch list. There is excellent moments in this film. And, you know, there's going to be snobs at parties who say, Oh, you haven't seen The Sound of Metal. The Sound of Metal. The Sound of Metal is about a heavy metal drummer who's losing his hearing. Anybody who says that obviously didn't pay a damn attention to the film. And everybody likes this film because it's a sad sob story about some guy that makes bad decisions. Personally, I don't think we should be calling this guy a hero. We should be calling him a guy that makes bad decisions. So yeah, put it way down on your watch list. It's one of those things you, you kind of have to do once in your life. But it's not Requiem for a Dream. It's a film that you should watch to talk to snobs at parties with, not a film that you need to watch to have that experience. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's not terrible. It's just not as good as everybody thinks it is. Anyway, it's just my opinion. Love to hear yours. Comments below. I'm Richard. 
Salutations, Plebeians! It is I, Stephen Miller, emissary and advisor to his dark orange lordship and the real President Donald Trump, reminding you to comment on and like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, or I will suck out your eyes and feed them to my two tarantulas, Meredith and Red Pill!